What's up everyone? Welcome back to another DIY with Rye. Today, we're going to try and clean this up. So, if any of you guys have been following me on Instagram, which, if you're not and you're on Instagram, what are you doing? You'll know that I just moved into this new place. And since then, I've been in a kind of limbo with my shop setup, where this is kind of my storage. It's, uh, it could be better. So, what I want to do is create a cabinet system that I can put uh, a lot of this stuff in and just kind of get it off of the shelf, make it look better, and make it more inviting and organized to come into the shop and work. So uh, let's take a look at the plan that I got for that. Now usually when it comes to plans, I will go in and create a complete 3D model, cat out the entire thing, just because that's what I'm comfortable doing. However, for this one, I was kind of rushing it, so I went old school, created a little plan. Let's see how closely we can follow this. It's... For this build, I ended up using roughly two full sheets of plywood. Now you'll see that I had them broken down at the home goods center just so I could transport them and also use them on my table saw a little bit better. Following my plans, I broke the plywood down into all the pieces that I would need, including the size of the cabinet, the bottom of the cabinet, all of the stretchers used on the back and top of the cabinet, as well as the cabinet drawers, the drawer fronts, and the cabinet doors. The last step before starting assembly of the cabinet was to cut out the recesses for the toe kicks on the side panels. To do this, I measured everything out with a combination square and then carefully followed the lines using my jigsaw. Alright, now we've got all the lumber cut down for the base cabinets. Uh, this is pretty much everything we need to put them together. And to do that, we're going to be using the Craig 310 pocket hole jig. Uh, this is the 310 plus an add-on that gives you a spacer and another 310 single pocket hole jig. In my opinion, this is the best route to go when you're first starting pocket hole joinery or basically um, starting to get into more of like a cabinet style woodworking or putting things together in a way that um, you would like to be a little bit more of a finished piece. It's pretty cheap. Um, the 310 on its own is roughly around $20 right now, and it gives you everything you need to get started. Um, and the best part that I found is you can scale up as you get better and as you feel more comfortable working with pocket holes, uh, as I've done with this add-on piece. This is the best route to go, basically, when you're getting started. I've talked enough about this, let's get to building. And so I began drilling all the pocket holes into the stretchers and bottom piece. However, it wasn't long until... Come across my first mistake. Let me show you what I did. Alright, so as you can see here, those don't line up. I totally forgot when I was making the stretcher pieces going across the cabinet to account for the fact that I was pushing them inside. I had them originally measured for the full four foot length, but I forgot to subtract for each side piece. Yeah, it just, it happens. So I'm gonna cut these pieces off, redrill the pocket holes, and then we'll get back to assembly. So after that brief hiccup and fixing the mistake that I made, I got back to assembly and things went a lot smoother after that. Working from the bottom of the cabinet moving upwards, 
I used a liberal amount of glue along with the pocket screws to hold everything together. Now it's good practice when using pocket screws to use glue as well as the glue is a little bit more of a permanent measure and has less likely of a chance to fail over time compared to just using pocket screws. Now while we're on this step, I would like to say it's a good idea to clamp your pieces together while driving the pocket screws in. I found that whenever I was just holding the boards in place, they had a tendency to wander a little bit while driving in the screws. Now, if you apply a good clamping pressure to your boards when putting them together, you won't have this issue and it'll be a lot easier as well to align everything. Okay, as you can see, some stuff got done off camera because I forgot to turn on the camera. But all I did was add a center divider to the cabinet carcass so that way I could mount the drawer hardware onto. Uh, now I'm working on the face frame, which I have all of my pieces cut up. Now I just need to do pocket holes, screw everything and glue everything together and then mount it up on the cabinet. So let's get to work. For the face frame in the cabinet, I ended up going with a hard maple as I was looking for something that could be a little bit more durable in terms of withstanding any sort of bumps or nicks or anything that could be thrown at it working in a shop environment. To keep everything even, I clamped the pieces onto a scrap piece of plywood that I knew was straight as my work table doesn't really have a lip to grip onto. To set the center frame, as well as the drawer frames, I measured and drew the center lines for each piece, then lined them up, added glue, clamped them in place, and screwed them together, in pretty much the same fashion that I had done with the rest of the frame. Before attaching the face frame and while I had the cabinet tipped over, I took the opportunity to add some leveling feet to help stabilize the entire structure while it's sitting on our uneven garage floor. In attaching the face frame, I applied a bead of glue all the way around the perimeter of the cabinet as well as to the center section. Then I put the face frame into place, moved it around a little bit to spread out the glue, and then tacked everything in place using a rat nailer. Now that I've got the face frame on and the entire cabinet base is built up, I need to next work on the countertop, which is what this part's going to be, and we'll get to that in a little bit. I also need to make up the drawers, all that stuff, but right now I'm going to try and hang the lower cabinet doors. I've never done this before, and I'm using the like European style hinges on this. The instructions aren't super great as far as how to align everything, so I'm just kind of winging it. What I've figured out is it's probably the best to figure out the center of your door opening, mark that, and then mark up where you want the hinges to be. And then to make sure that your door is centered, find the center of that, and then mark up the corresponding uh, measurement that you chose for the door frame. So for here, I've got these going up about seven and three eighths from my center. I feel like that's a good spacing that will help distribute the load of the door evenly and should be good. We'll find out though. So uh, yeah, let's get this thing mounted. So like I said, I measured everything based off of the center of the cabinet opening. Now I used the actual cabinet hinges to mark where the holes were supposed to be for mounting the screws. Then I set everything in place and moved over to the cabinet doors. Using another jig from Craig, this time their concealed cabinet door hinge jig, 
I drilled out the holes for the hardware on the doors. Now this jig is also super helpful and I will leave a link for it in the description below as I found it very useful in terms of taking all the guesswork out of trying to set everything up. The last thing to do was attach the hinges to themselves and I was good to go. Moving our way up, we've got the cabinet doors on. Those are good to go. Now I'm going to start working on the drawers. Because the cabinet face frame that I'm working with extends out into the cabinet by about three quarters of an inch, I'm gonna be using these plywood standoffs that I just cut to get myself flush with the face frame in order to mount the drawer slides to the front. On the inside, because this is a double walled piece of plywood, so it in essence comes up to an inch and a half thick, I don't have to worry about doing any sort of standoffs. So I'm going to get these mounted up and start working on putting the drawers together. Measuring from the top, I set the drawer standoffs in place to exactly where I wanted the drawer slides to go. Then I temporarily set the drawer slides in place with a level attached to the top to mark out exactly where I need to pre-drill the holes in order to mount the drawer slides in place. When attaching the drawer slide, I worked my way from the center, then front to back in order to make sure that everything was level. Next it was on to making some drawers, and man oh man did I have a lot more pocket holes to drill. To help speed up construction of the drawers, I attached a couple of scrap plywood pieces to my work table in order to fit together everything and provide some sort of clamping pressure against the screws. Last thing to do was attach the drawer bottom, which was a thinner sheet of plywood attached using glue and some brad nails. Now I've got the drawers assembled, we can work on putting them into the cabinet and mounting them onto the drawer slides. There are a bunch of different ways to do this and I am no expert and by no means do not necessarily follow what I'm doing. This is just what I found to work at the moment. Because yeah, taking this strip of wood that I cut down and just putting it on here as a spacer, I don't even really know how thick it is. I just know that it'll give me enough clearance to uh, easily slide the drawer in and out and I won't be rubbing up on the face frame and the drawers are shallow enough that there's no headspace clearance as you can see with this one that I already installed. I'm going to balance the drawer on this spacer, pull out the drawer slides, mark the center holes so that way I know kind of where my balancing point is for mounting these guys in and then I'll get everything mounted up, throw it in and we'll see how it works. In retrospect, this definitely could have been a lot easier had I just measured up how far I needed the drawer slides to sit on the drawers instead of doing this crazy balancing act. So learn from me and do it right. Finishing up the drawers, all I had left to do was mount the drawer faces on as well as apply the hardware to the drawer fronts. Using a trick that many woodworkers on YouTube use, I first added a spacer between the 
top of the cabinet door and the drawer front to make sure my spacing was correct. Then using the holes that I had previously drilled for the drawer pull, I attached the face frame to the drawer using some screws and this allowed me to come in from behind and permanently attach it in a way that was a lot easier than trying to use tape or some other crazy method to try and keep that drawer front on. Then after I just removed the screws and attached my drawer handle. I attached the cabinet door handles as well at this time. Almost to the finish line. We've got the drawers in, cabinet doors on, we've got the handles, everything set up. All that's left now is to do the countertop. For this, I'm using a design based off of something that Travis from Shop Nation does. He takes a sheet of plywood and then layers on top an MDF sheet. I'm going with OSB just because it was a little bit cheaper, but that's what I'm going with. I'll make sure to link his video on how he builds his workshop countertops and all that stuff in the description below. But let's get this thing finished. Going back to the plan, I measured out the size of the countertop and cut each piece individually. After getting my two pieces cut down, I assembled everything in place on top of the cabinet. Now, I definitely did not use enough glue and you should probably use a lot more as well as weight everything down to make sure you get a good bond between the two materials. But it'll work for me, especially since I'm coming up from the bottom and screwing everything in place. Then to finish off the countertop, I added some more maple trim along the sides and front, just to give it some good durability against any sort of wear and tear. Plus, we can't forget the finish. Gotta make this thing shine. this one up. I am incredibly happy having this new space to not only work on top of, but be able to store almost all of my stuff. It's going to come in super handy and just be a great new asset to the shop. I still have a few more things that I'd like to do with this, um, including adding probably a couple shelves down here to kind of store a little bit more things. I also got ideas and plans coming up for adding a tool wall. That'll be an upcoming video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But anyways, for now, this is about ready to go and be utilized in the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope it provided you with either at least some entertainment or maybe you learned something new. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to keep up to date on all the different projects I got coming up and catch you guys next time.